Will I get married? Will they come back to me? Are they still thinking about me? Do they still love me? As psychics, we get these questions a lot and totally okay, totally welcome, but sometimes they can get a little repetitive and a little overwhelming. So in this video, I'm giving you my top tips for giving relationship readings as a psychic. Welcome to my channel. My name is Lauren. I'm a psychic development coach. So I'm a psychic psychic. I'm here to help you develop your abilities, um, learn how to deal with clients, start your own psychic business. So if that's something you're into, feel free to subscribe. I have courses, I have free YouTube resources. Um, I'm basically here to help you through my learned experience as well as my coaching experience as a psychic coach. So um, today we're talking about relationship readings and I'm surprised I haven't done a video on this before, but shout out to one of my Patreon members. I believe it was Melanie that asked this question in our monthly Q and A. If you want to join Patreon, it's a good place to ask me questions as they arise. I do that once a month in like a video response. Um, and sometimes I release them out to everyone. Sometimes I don't. So it's a good place. You can always jump on and watch all my past videos. We have so many good questions that happen every single month. And her question was basically, how do you deal with relationship readings? Because I totally understand and I get that like, as a psychic, a lot of us can kind of dread those relationship readings. Now, I would argue that um, the number one thing people reach out to psychics for is probably relationships. And I think that's because we often want answers, we want to know what the other person is thinking and feeling, and um, psychics are just like synonymous with like looking into that. And I think, unfortunately, that's a lot of the bad companies and bad eggs that promote that and prey on people who are having relationship issues. Um, and so psychics are just synonymous with like love readings. It just happens. Um, so I do think as a psychic, you have to kind of be prepared for the inevitable, prepared that someone is going to ask you those questions. Those questions being like, when will I meet my partner? Will we reconcile? What does um, my next relationship look like? When is it gonna be here? Um, very difficult questions to sometimes answer. And sometimes the answers that come through for spirit are not what that person wants to hear usually. Not all the time, sometimes. I would also argue that like the number one videos on the internet for like readings, like for psychics giving readings, like group readings of like pick a cards, is probably relationship readings. I think it's just a very common thing that you have to deal with as a psychic. Um, so I have a lot of tips on how to kind of navigate these and make them easy for you and easy for your client. My first tip for relationship readings is I really think it shouldn't be your sole thing. I really don't think it should be like all of your services. I think you should do them sparingly. A lot of the tips in this video are gonna be from my experience. Take it with what you will. Like you do not have to do the same thing as me. Um, if you just absolutely love relationship readings and you wanna do it all the time, awesome, go for it. The reason why I don't do them all the time is because when you advertise like this is what I do, then I think you're gonna get burnt out on it, doing it all the time. And I really like having the variety of readings that come in. Some people are seeing me because they wanna connect with a loved one. Some people are seeing me because they want to talk to an animal. Some people want to figure out their relationship or their career. Like I'm not oversaturated with reading relationships. and. I think that if you oversaturate yourself with anything, it can get too repetitive and it can be really hard to like feel like you're coming in fresh every time and with a blank slate and you're not just giving the same advice. I think there's also a danger there of like when everything feels like the same exact reading, you start to float into wanting to make people happy. Um, it's not a hard and fast rule, but you know, you can start drifting into like telling people what they want to hear instead of what they need to hear. Um, and I feel like for whatever reason, it's a little more difficult with relationships because we want what we want, right? <laughs> and you know, telling somebody that this relationship might not work out can be very devastating. Um, and so I get as a psychic why you would want to like make them happy and just kind of skew it so that they can be happy. But it's so important that we don't tell people what they wanna hear um, and we give them what they need to hear or whatever spirit is giving us. Um, again, I wouldn't advertise it as my sole thing 
because it attracts a certain type of client. Um, maybe that's the client you want, um, but I do feel like, um, and again, if you've come to me for a relationship reading, please do not take this as like, I hate you or something, but it, it attracts people who are desperate, who are emotional, and that's totally fine, and I am here to support that person and hold that energy for them, but if I'm doing that every single reading, it can get really emotionally draining. So I try to saturate it with other readings um, that are not so heavy or emotional, and then I am able to show up better for each of those readings not feeling as drained. Now, I, I wouldn't say to not do them at all, because I do think that, you know, any sort of reading that challenges you only strengthens you as a psychic and not challenge you in a bad like overextending sort of way but like if you feel like you're shying away from it or you have trouble with it that's where you go to your guides and ask you know why am I having such a hard time with this you know and maybe it's that you're struggling within your own relationship and because of that you feel like you can't speak to this or um, maybe you just get so angry at people <laughs> so often and you really need to learn how to control your emotions in a reading. Um, you know, whatever it is, I do think that, um, again, completely cutting them out, I wouldn't recommend, again, just because I think they come up so often that you kind of have to be prepared. Um, a lot of people assume that they can come to you for that. Um, but again, if you do not absolutely want to do them at all, just make sure that's very clear, like up front, I don't do relationship readings. Or you can also just like make them less accessible by saying, I only do relationship readings where I ask the questions, or I only, I choose the spreads, or I do it in a video recording and then I send it to you. So it's not like you have to do the one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of what I'm talking about in this video is like, doing a phone call or an in-person or a video reading with somebody like one-on-one -on -one live. Ultimately, I try not to like blast it out there that I'm like gonna solve all your love problems or like I'm a relationship psychic. I will answer those questions, but I'm not like attracting it and making it my sole like service that I'm offering. And because of that, they're a little bit more sparing and I don't have to do them as much. My second tip is to make sure that you are not doing them too soon. So for example, somebody breaks up with their partner and is able to talk to you like 20 minutes later, they're gonna be super emotional and probably charged and just like intense. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with being emotional. It's just that it makes it a bad reading environment. Um, and I've talked about this in a different video of like why your emotions can like hurt the psychic ability both um, as a reader and a receiver. And you know, it's so important that you come to readings very neutral when it comes to your emotions as a reader. And then again, as a receiver, because you know, you're paying for their time and their energy, you wanna be able to hear it and ask the right questions um, and listen to what is actually coming through instead of just being so charged with your emotions. So this is where I say not to do those emergency readings. Um, I always think that if you can give the person like time to cool off first, that's always gonna help, always gonna help. So how you offer your readings is important because if you're doing live readings, you're making yourself accessible then. If you are like, I'm thinking like YouTube, like streaming, if you let people like book with you same day like this, you know, I would suggest not doing that. I would suggest having like my website right now, um, once it hits 24 hours before my session, it closes it out. So basically you have to book um, at least 24 hours in advance to like have a session with me. And a lot of the reason for that is so that I can have people coming in clear headed and not emotional. And that, that doesn't go for relation, just relationship readings. I also like have that for like when people lose other people or when people like lost their pets or something. Like it's very important for a lot of different reasons that people cannot book me in the next 10 minutes. And the other part of this is to make sure that you're not talking to somebody too often about the relationship. That is like where I see so many people rely on psychics as a crutch. Um, and so I have like a rule and you cannot come see me if we are talking about like the same exact thing. So like if you are calling me up about this relationship and asking me questions and you wanna see me a week later and you're asking me the same questions, I'm gonna say no, you know, there's not enough time that has passed. Things have not changed enough. 
Um, you need to let your life play out and you need to make your own decisions before coming and seeing me. Now again, I, even though I have that rule, like if somebody's coming to me like two weeks later for something completely different, that's totally fine. Um, but that is like such a easy trap to fall into with relationships because like if somebody is so concerned about what's going on that they can't even move forward a couple days without consulting you as a psychic, we're starting to get into very like codependent and unhealthy relationship. Um, and that's where I would encourage somebody to maybe see a therapist instead. Um, so I know it's a temptation. I know you can take those clients, but I really don't think you should because it, again, they stop relying on their own intuition. They don't let their life play out. Um, and it can turn into something not so good where they can take advantage of you in a lot of ways as a reader. And for both of these things, just put it on your website, put it up front in a disclaimer. Maybe it's like the first email that you send to people like, hey, I only see people once every three months. I get, you gotta wait 24 hours to talk to me, like whatever it is, just make it clear up front. And that will kind of weed out those people who are just like super desperate looking for something like this and you kind of avoid the mess in the first place. My third tip, which is the hardest one, <laughs> is to try to remain as neutral and unbiased as possible when it comes to these relationship readings. I mean, I totally relate. They can get frustrating, they can get annoying, and like when one comes through, it's so easy to be like, oh God, here's another one. Um, again, please don't take that as a judgment. <laughs> if you've seen me for a relationship reading, I am always seriously happy to do that. I do think that most people are not this way, but there are some people where like they straight up tell me I'm the third psychic they're talking to within the last couple days and they're asking me the same questions to see <laughs> who's right. And what they really mean by that is like, who's going to tell me what I want to hear. Um, and so like it can get a lot and I totally understand and I have to be aware of my emotional state going into it because you know if I'm judging every relationship reading that comes in and I'm like oh god here's another one like eye roll you know what is the energy that I'm putting out I'm very much putting out like a judgmental like oh this person is like wanting this for the wrong reasons like I'm already prejudging the information that's going to come through just through my attitude if that makes sense and this person it could be their first time reaching out to a psychic they could have genuine good intentions and if i'm as the reader just like Ugh, you know i think that i could not be giving them the correct information so i always have to assume that everyone has good intentions that everyone is not doing this for the wrong reasons <laughs> that um I'm coming in with a blank slate that this is not just another person who needs to hear that they need to work on themselves. You know, maybe this is somebody who really just found their soulmate and needs confirmation, you know? So again, that's why I always go in with a blank slate. I try not to ever judge. I really try to like, and I'll have that ahead of time and I'll try to ground that energy and say, that's my opinion. That's my frustration. That's my stuff. That's my ego. I'm not going to bring that into this reading. I am going to be a clean and clear vessel and receive whatever it is that needs to be received and pass it along. I'm not going to like put my own judgment on that. And I have a whole video on bias and like how to kind of control that. Um, so definitely check out that video if you kind of struggle with that. My fourth tip, I think this one is huge, is to know how to ask the right questions for your client. Um, a lot of times, and this just goes for any reading, a lot of times people come in and they have questions that they want answered, but they don't exactly know how to best ask questions to get good psychic information. Again, I have a whole video on this, and the reason why I'm saying this so much is because um, I, instead of reiterating all the same information, if you haven't watched that video, you can go watch it, but um, it's so important to understand that like the way you ask questions dictates the answers that come through. Um, for example, should I or shouldn't I questions or is this a yes or is this a no? Am I going to be with this person or am I not going to be with this person? You are leaving two results. You are leaving two options by asking that question. You are, you are asking a yes or no question. You're only going to get a yes or no answer. And I always say like, well, what if it was a no, but, or a yes, but you always want to have your questions be open-ended. That's just like one little tip of remembering how to ask good psychic questions. There's like a lot more that goes into it. So as a good psychic, what you have to do 
is ask the questions for them. Now, you don't always have to be like, I'm going to correct you. <laughs> that was a shitty question. Here, here's my uh, better question. Um, sometimes I'll just do it in my head and not even tell them that I'm doing that. Other times I will say something like, hey, I'm going to answer your question as is, but I want to also ask it this way because I think it's a, it's a better way to get what you're looking for. Like, for example, everyone always asks like, am I going to get with this person? And so I'll be like, okay, I'll read that as is. And then I'll kind of explain what I explained. And then I'll say, you know what, let me ask, how can I manifest this relationship? Like if it is meant to be, how can I manifest this person? And then I'm giving them action items. I'm giving them things that they can actually work on. It's not just completely out of their control. Um, it's something that they know, okay, if I do these things, and the relationship doesn't work, okay, cool, not the relationship for me. Or, hey, I have things I can do. I don't have to wait for this to be falling in my lap. I'm empowered. I was told, hey, you know, call them up first or put myself out there, you know, whatever it is. Often what I will do is I will default to spirit. I will say, spirit, what questions do we really need to be asking? <laughs> um, because as much as, you know, I love answering questions for my clients, sometimes I think when we're clouded and we're not thinking clearly, it's really important for um, spirit to kind of pull us back and be like, you know, this is a better question. This is what we really need to be looking into. Like, yeah, you, you might be concerned about like not being able to mend things with your partner, but maybe there's something inside that needs to be mended first. Maybe there's something that you need to take care of on your end and give compassion towards yourself so that this can resolve itself. So being a good psychic sometimes is knowing what questions to ask or again, defaulting to spirit and asking, hey, what do we really need to be talking about here? Um, because I think if you just constantly keep asking those same questions um, and not stepping in and offering a better solution as, you know, the person giving the reading, I think that that reading can get repetitive. It can just be so surface level. It can be what they want to hear and not what they need to hear. Tip number five. This is my personal opinion. You don't have to do this, but I really think it's important to educate your client. Educate them on how things work and don't work. And I don't necessarily mean that in the sense of like, this is how the universe works and this is how soulmates work. No, I really think it's more about like telling them how psychics work, about how, you know, you believe that we have free will, for example. I feel like most people are on the same page about that. Um, and even though that is technically a value of mine and some people don't believe that, some people don't believe you have free will, that everything is fated. Um, but it's important for your client to know that. It's important for them to know your values, your ethics, your bias, um, because they might not know. And I find that so many relationship readings, somebody comes to me from another psychic and they say, this psychic told me I have to be with this person and this is my only person. Or they say, this is my twin flame and and they'll just come up with some of the craziest things I've ever heard. And I'll have to kind of step in and say, this is how I believe it works. I don't believe that you can force someone to fall in love with you. I don't believe you can cast a spell and make somebody fall in love with you. I think that everyone has free will, that relationships are a two party thing. You know, you can do all the stuff on your end, but this other person has to be willing as well. Um, and you know, even just taking it a step back of like how, reading the future works, you know, the future can change. I'm reading the energy right now, but if your partner goes out and does X, Y, Z tomorrow instead, that's going to change the reading. And people love hearing that. <laughs> the amount of times I've got, so why even see a psychic then? <laughs> um, even just the idea that psychics can be wrong. Some people, um, again, come to me and they're, they're like, what? Psychic? Uh, psychics aren't right <laughs> like no we can we can f up like it's it's totally normal and again a lot of what you might have to deal with that as a psychic is like people coming from other psychics with very bad ethics and kind of having to recorrect that and really i i think this is good mostly because the, it helps the client treat you better but also they move forward and treat other psychics better and they have a better understanding of like you know what this isn't just, you know, gonna fall into my lap or I can't force someone to fall in love with me. Um, I do think that it does help them to some extent. You just have to be very careful again of like what 
concepts you're pushing on them and making sure that you are very clear of like, these are my values, these are my beliefs. You don't have to necessarily agree with them. And my last tip is to always honor spirit's message and your integrity. And I think this really comes down to not trying to make the person that you're reading happy. Um, and I think it's so, again, it's so easy to fall in the trap of like wanting to people please, wanting to make them happy. But when the message coming through is not going to make them happy, it's very important that you still deliver it. And it can be hard. It can be hard to deliver those tough messages because some people will receive it with grace. Other people will kind of be like, okay, and then you'll never hear from them again. <laughs> or, or they'll be mean, 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 mean. Some of the meanest people I've ever had are all like, it was a relationship reading. And again, I think it's, it's so important to honor your psychic ability, your connection with spirit. Because if you are picking and choosing, if you are telling spirit, uh, no, I don't wanna give them that because that makes me nervous. I do believe that spirit stops giving you information. I do believe that your psychic ability stops working. You, we have to deliver it as is. That doesn't mean you have to be mean about it. Like it doesn't mean you have to be nasty. Like you can deliver it with compassion. Um, but I think that again, omitting information or sweetening it or again like literally just altering it to the point where it's not what's coming through at all to make that other person happy um, again is just ultimately going to hurt you and your psychic ability and if that's tough for you I always um, like to say like you can try to remind them that you're just the messenger <laughs> like don't shoot the messenger you can always like buffer it with some other things like giving them like ask spirit, hey, is there any positives here that I can also like sandwich this information with so it's not as like tough. You can even say, oh, this is tough love coming through or like crack a joke like, oh, I hate when this happens, but this is what I'm getting or and ultimately you cannot control the type of person you're going to get. You don't know if you're going to get the super awesome person or the super awful person. Um, so you might as well just stick to your ethics and your integrity and deliver the information as is. Because even if they are gonna get ugly, what, do you really want them to come back? Probably not, you know? <laughs> so it's probably good that you part ways and they don't come back and see you. Eventually you will attract the type of clients that you want. Just again, by sticking to your ethics, by putting this in the disclaimer up front, by being very clear, um, I find that over time, those clients become less and less because you are clearer and firmer with your boundaries with clients. So those are my tips. If you found them helpful um, or if you still want more information, um, I do have a whole section um, on reading difficult clients in my Psychic Development Masterclass. So I'm curious if you have had experiences with this, whether you've been a psychic reading somebody or you've received um, a reading from somebody. I feel like equally like I've been to people that were all like judgy and like Phew. there was actually one reading that I had at the Aspen program from another student that stuck with me forever. And I could tell she was very like judgmental about relationships. And she told me that um, my partner, he was never gonna work out, is never gonna you know happen. And I held on to that for such a long time and um, ended up marrying him. We've been married and together for like, so long I have to count. Yeah, 14 years, wow, okay. So we've been together for 14 years. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I just remember like feeling so off about that because I was like, I feel like she's confirming my fears, but I don't feel like she was being psychic. Like I feel like that was her bias coming through. Um, and you kind of get that radar um, for other psychics after a while, you start to like, be like, you know, guys, was that um, psychic or was that their ego or was that, you know, their own stuff? And I definitely think that was her own stuff then. Anyways, um, want to know what your opinions are. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Give this video a like if you found it helpful and I will see you in the next one. Alrighty, bye.